Good morning. This is Pastor Ralph again. I'm here in studio with Dr. Halei again. You know, last week we were together. So Dr. Halei, give us a few words. Hi, everyone. I feel amazing, Pastor Ralph. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We had an awesome time last time, didn't we? We did, we did. I'm so, so yeah. grateful for you. Thank you. Because I really, really was lit up after our yes. talk. <laughs> yeah. And that's what we want to talk about, you know, uh, kind of a part two of what we talked about last week when you asked the questions, who is God and prayer and how many times we should pray and all those good things. And some of your life experiences and the stories you told were just very good. Uh, put some things in perspective about you, your life and where you come from. And I think that was quite interesting and you really shared in a way that was relevant for everyone. So I really appreciate that. Yeah, you are welcome. And I really appreciate your knowledge, Ralph. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much. So we'll get through it again. And uh, let's go from right where we left off last time. I'm going to ask you this and let you expound on it. So after our last talk, we came together and time together. Uh, there was a shift you talked about. Something shifted in you after we had this talk, this communication about God and about your life, what was that shift that happened? Because I think our viewers uh, probably experienced similar things. And I mean, if you bring it to the table and share what it meant to you, I'm sure they can figure out what it means for them too. Because I was touched by what you said. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I just feel like there's this peace in my life right now. Like the balloon got popped. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. You know, yeah. I am this spirit. I am Hale. Yes. Behind my thoughts and my emotions. Mm -hmm. I am love. I am unconditional love. Mm -hmm. And it, it's so freeing, Ralph. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the good news about a conversation, because to bring context to it, you know, when people become aware of who they really are, you are not your body. You know, I mean, if your body hurts, you don't hurt. It's just your body's experiencing something and you can take control of that with your thoughts and emotions. And, you know, one of the things you said here, and I want to reiterate it, you know, after we spoke about you being become more self-aware, more Hale, what do you mean by becoming more Hale? I know that's your name, but what does that mean to you? I'm not my thoughts. I'm not my emotions. I was fear. Yeah. You know, and now I'm faith. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's revolutionary. Uh, it is, Ralph. I like that. I like that. <laughs> so when you felt more uh, open and receiving, you know, what does that mean? Like you were more open to and receiving of something in your life that you maybe were not as open and more receiving of? So last time you told me, if I give you a gift, what are you going to say? Yes. And I said, thank you. But in, in reality, I would be like, no, I yes. would block it. I would mm -hmm. resist it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I'm not worthy in my mind. I'm yeah. not worthy. I feel bad. You know, like it's, it, I would not want to take it. Mm. So I was blocked okay. from receiving good things like gifts and, and love. So now I'm just open. Mm. You know, before I would get awkward too, Ralph. Yeah, you're awkward. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> like this awkwardness yeah. would come in and then I would feel bad. And now I'm noticing that. And instead of being awkward and feeling bad, I'm grateful. Wow. Wow. And for our viewers, I know a lot of them have the same sentiment. You know, I grew up. Uh, in an unworthy kind of mindset. I never thought I was enough, never thought I was good enough. And so when somebody tried to do something for me, even though I needed it, I would always say no, because there was these attachments that I felt like if they give it to me, then I'm going to owe them something, or I'm going to have to do something to make myself feel worthy of what they've done. So it's better not to take it. And yeah. really, I was shooting myself in the foot when I did that. And so I'm thankful that you brought that up, because I think a lot of people experience that. People don't know how to receive. They don't know how to be open. It's a fear of being vulnerable, right? Yes. So what, why, why, do you, why did you do that? Why did you think you were blocking it all? What was some of the reasons why? I think just growing up, you know, in our culture, we're always giving, give, uh, give, yeah. give, give, give. And mm -hmm. just in my mindset, I felt bad. Oh, that person needs to do something or yeah. they spent the money on the gift exactly. or, you know, it, it's just me feeling bad for the other person. Yes, yes. But guess what, Ralph? That person actually feels like 10 times better giving to yeah. you yeah. than receiving. Yes, Yes. And that was really powerful for me to learn. That's powerful. You know what Jesus said 
It's funny you said it that way. Jesus said it's more blessed to give than it is to receive, but it doesn't mean you can't receive, but it's the giving that opens the door for receiving. And so it's a kind of a cycle that if I'm going to give you something and you receive it, then I'm fulfilled and you're fulfilled. But if I give you something and you reject it, then that's going to make me feel rejected. And so it's interesting how God gives and we receive, and then we can give, and then they receive people in our lives. So that's powerful. Well, that's good. Here's another thing. And you said you felt, you know, we talked about God being spirit. We talked about God being love and God being light. And after that shift, you talked about being more grateful. You know, when, it, when you talk about being grateful, put some context to that. What, is, what does it mean to you that you were more grateful? Because I've known you as a grateful person. You seem pretty grateful to me, but now you're more grateful. What yes. does it look like? Yeah. It, for me, it's, it's peace. Yeah. It's receiving. It's being thankful. But before I was too thankful. Yeah. You know, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's energy. That's yeah, words, yeah. right? Yeah, it's a lot of work. You say it once, and that's it. Yeah, yeah. Overkill. Yeah. yeah. We can overthink. We can overthink. We can overdo. We can do all that stuff. And I think that comes from also still, still feeling a sense of emptiness sometimes, like we have to fill the room. I, I tell a lot of people, if you're in a place and you don't have anything to say, it's okay to be quiet. You don't yeah. always have to be talking. You can be quiet. There's a stillness. And there's a godlike emotion that comes up on the inside that brings satisfaction, that brings comfort, and it also brings peace. And I think the world is in desperate need today of peace. There's so much yes. chaos going on in what you're sharing here. Here's another thought that you had. And I just want to go down the list here and just kind of go over these things you were talking about, the shift now. Yes. These are the things that shifted in you after we had that discussion. And so you felt more faith leading to action. Yes. Yeah. What does yes. that look like? My intentions are are more powerful mm. with that faith. Yes. And that leads me to take more action. Yes, yes. I and I'm that. just go, 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 go. Yeah. So what were you like before when you said more faith leading you more action? What were you like before? In my head. In your head. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, so in your head. It's like, yeah. In other words, you're having these conversations, these battles, and probably blocking a lot of the things you really wanted to do. Yeah. Because we, you, you talked one time about assigning uh, certain behaviors or, or intentions or an outcome to something that really is, never is really. Sometimes we say, oh, this is that. We assign this to it or we assign that to it. And it, maybe it's not that at all. Like if somebody's angry, well, they're angry because. We don't really know why people are angry. But mm -hmm. if we assign how we feel to every situation without really taking a pause and really looking at what it really is, we're probably going down the road and not to no good end in, in far as I'm concerned. So I think people self-fulfill their doubts, their fears, they, they make it worse by overthinking and then living in the past. Everything they say today is about the past. What about the present and the future going forward? Yeah. That's yeah, a huge piece. Nobody teaches you how to get out of the past. Yes. You know, everybody has some sort of trauma in their past. Yes. And, um, you know, like for me, silence was awkwardness. Oh, Okay. You know, and now silence is peace. Yeah, it's, it's peace. It's faith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I feel the same way. I, I was kind of an introverted kid, kind of an introverted man a little bit, but I'm an introvert only in myself, being around myself. But when I get around people, there's this thing that just comes out of me. It's like the presence of God comes forth, and I reach out to people, and I feel people. I feel the love. I have compassion for them. And I know we talked about that last week. You just want people to learn to love themselves. And and I found that in ways that we have to learn to love ourselves, we have to know our God. And when we get to know God, you know, God is love. You yes. start to say, wow, God is love. Then I'm love because I want to be like God. So if you just start from that vantage point that I'm a loving person, I am love, I am abundance, I'm in these things that I want, yes. then you're not needing them anymore because you're saying I am these things. And that's what we talk a bit about the law of attraction, which I say is the law of sowing and reaping. Yes. It's similar. It yes. does bring it to pass. So that, that's a powerful piece. And uh, what about peace for you? When you talk about you're more peaceful, 
you know, I know we experience peace, but now you're more peaceful. I can't imagine you being any more peaceful than you are, but you're more peaceful because of the shift. You're more peaceful because you're intentional and you're more halle now than you've ever been. Yes. 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 That's an awesome thing. So when you talk about peace, what does your day look like now that you're more peaceful, no matter what happens, anything comes up, any situation come up, you know, kind of like even this morning, something comes up and you're like, oh, <laughs> my goodness, your real life experiences, you know, yeah. you can make a decision to choose to follow through with some intention you made. Yeah. Or you can be okay with not following through, and nobody's going to judge you right or wrong. But if you don't follow through, what's going to be the outcome? I feel bad. I'll have anxiety if I don't follow through. Like today, I last night, I didn't sleep for two hours. Oh, my goodness. You know, I mean, I didn't sleep more than two hours. Yes. And I messaged you this morning. I said, Ralph, I can't make it today. (laughs) (laughs) Then half an hour before, you know, I had to leave, I was like, oh, no, I love doing this show and I love helping people. And that powerful intention and faith made me take action. Wow. Yes. Wow. And you followed through. So now the outcome is that you finished something that you intended to do. So your intention is complete. And now you get on with the rest of your day. And it may have been something very serious. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't try to be little people when they feel things. I try to go with them. But whatever you choose to do, I stand with you. If you would have chose not to come, then I would just make the changes I needed to make. But then you chose to come. And I said, the champion is here. She arose to the occasion. Yes. <laughs> so you were here. So that, that's really good. And I think for our audience, you know, a lot of things that when you make an intention, an intention to do something, if you do that, know that it's going to get challenged. Life is going to challenge everything you decide to do because it's your decision. Now, life will make sure you really want that decision. You know, a lot of people say, well, the universe is doing it or God is doing it or whatever they think it is. But my point is when I make a decision, that's when I get the combat. That's when I, oh, man, am I going to finish this thing? Am I going to bring it to completion? And I think it's a good thing that if we just press in, if you can, and don't feel bad yet if you can't because, you know, you're doing the best you can with what you have. And if you're drawing from the past, it's kind of hard to go forward. I noticed that for myself. And everything that I know, everything I've experienced is in the past. And that's why I'm looking for new experiences so that I have yes. as much in front of me as I had behind me so that I can have something else to draw from than what my experience was there. Because most of my experiences weren't that good in the past. No. You see, So I don't want to draw from all of that. It's kind of a mucky past. But if I go forward, there's where the possibilities, the hope, the faith and all the activity that I want. That's the party in the future. So that's what I want to do. Yes. But thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. Here's another thing. I want to talk to you about how you felt the energy of love. You know, love, you have more energy to love and to be loved. You know, what does that look like in your practice every day, around your family, you know, in your everyday life? It, it's self-love, number one. Okay. Setting boundaries with people. Okay. Saying no when you're saying no to yourself. Right. Um, I used to help everybody and 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 forget about me. Okay, that makes sense. Right. So do your exercises, eat the right foods, have the right thoughts, the love part, the unconditional love Mm. that you said that we are and God is was really powerful for me because that was like, it was like I was in my head. I'm like, no, I am worthy. No, you know, I am love. And, you know, so it was that love is peace for me. Yes. And you saying that God is unconditional love. (laughs) It was really powerful and enlightening. So thank you. It makes the shift. And if you could get the understanding, the Bible teaches that God is for us. And he's not against us. So when you think about that God is for you, then you have to make a decision that when things are happening in your life that are not happening for you, then you have to change that and say, well, they're happening through you. So God is trying to work through you to overcome something, to get you through the things you're going through, but he's not the one causing it. And so many people think that God is causing problems for them to learn, uh, to teach them a lesson. and, And God is bigger than that. He's bigger than that. I mean, he's given us the word. He's given us each other. He's given us life and some experiences that we can learn from. But every challenge that comes your way, you have been made in God's eyes. You have been given the power to overcome it. And that's a wonderful thing. You don't have to succumb to anything that is going to bring harm or danger to you or your family. You can intentionally, in an authentic way, 
You can believe yourself through anything and you can have faith and action through any things. And Jesus said this, all things are possible to him that believes. So that means if you believe it's possible for you, but it may not be possible for someone else that doesn't believe. And again, that's not wrong for them. That's just where they are. So it's very powerful. I love that about that. Now, the other thing you talked about, you felt more power. You know, it was like the energy of love and the power of love. When you talk about power, what, what does that do? The power to love. I had, or I have more energy. Yes. Um, I'm open to love mm -hmm. instead of resisting love. Yeah. And, you know, I'm loving myself. I'm loving others. I would love others more than myself yeah. before. Mm -hmm. And um, when you're in that energy, that light of love, and you believe, like you said, all things are possible when you believe, mm -hmm. that belief is powerful. It's enlightening. So you have more energy to do the things that bring you joy. Yes. So, Absolutely. so love is really powerful and belief is really powerful. Yes, it is. Believing that you're this powerful, beautiful soul, yeah. you know, that, that can create through you, mm -hmm. through your authentic self instead of like through, oh, should I do this or should I do that? All these should, 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 shoulds deplete your energy Yes, and you're not taking action. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, and I relate that to a person's essence, you know, who you are, your essence, your being, you know, and I found that in life, you know, and then I start talking to you about, you know, more about self and things that way. Yeah. I didn't know my ways of being. I didn't understand it. Let's put it that way. I didn't understand my ways of being when I got angry. There's always a reason why people carry anger or unforgiveness or, you know, self-sabotage and and you, you almost tend to become that, but that's not really who you are. So yeah. you're almost like taking on a personification of your feelings from your thoughts, feelings, and then behaviors. So yeah. all of that goes on. And I see a lot of that going around in the world today. And I see people struggling that if they don't do well at, at work, that doesn't make you a bad mom or a bad dad or a bad person. You just got to learn and get some more skills at what you do so you can be better at work. So we keep uh, attaching everything that's wrong with who we are. Yes. And it's not true. Can you speak to that for a minute? You are not, you, I mean, what I learned from you, that we are spirit. Yes. And um, we're in control of, of our thoughts and our emotions. Mm -hmm. So over time, those thoughts and emotions become your being. So it's, it's a habit. And then automatically, just like you're driving and at first yes. you're, you're paying attention to everything, right? Mm -hmm. And then it's automatic. That's good for driving, yeah. but it's not good for your soul. It's true. So, you know, I was a fearful being. And I see people, they're angry or they're like scared, you know, like you could, I see people now before I didn't see, yeah. just like you said, I was blind before. Yeah. <laughs> now I can see. You have seen, yeah, you, yeah. Seen, you have sight. Um, so it's just, um, it's just, it's that awareness of who you're being and practice of changing that way of being. Like I told you, I was insecure before. Right. Now I'm confident. Sometimes I shift back, yeah, right. but I catch it. Okay. You're aware now. I'm aware. Yeah. Exactly. I love that. And you're not your job. Exactly. You are not, you know, what you did yesterday. Yeah. You're a beautiful soul, Ralph. <laughs> a beautiful soul. You know, and, you know, it's a beautiful concept to talk about your soul because that's really who you are. In the Bible, it talks about what does a man profit to gain the whole world and lose his soul, meaning that the soul is more valuable than anything in the whole world. So God places your soul more valuable than anything that could be overcome or obtained in this world. And so what will you give in exchange for your soul? Hopefully nothing, because your soul is beautiful and it's the part of you that connects with God because your yes. flesh goes back to the earth when we pass and the spirit and the soul go to be with God where he is. And so that's important for us to know. You know, and here, here's a scripture that I want to, bring some context to that. And it's found in Ephesians chapter four, around the 22nd verse to 24. And it says this, that in reference to your former way of life, talking about your being, your manner, you are to rid yourselves of the old self. This is what the Bible teaches. They pass 
who you were, your experiences, when it comes to life and going forward, you're to rid yourself. In other words, don't look back at those things that you were, rid yourself of those things, you know, because they're not going to be productive in your future. That's what he's talking about. He says, which is being corrupted in accordance with lust and of deceit. He says, and that you are to be renewed in your spirit of your mind. Think about this. You are to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And what I've learned over the course being a pastor, that the spirit of your mind is your attitude. Okay. It's your attitude because the attitude is everything. If you approach something with a bad attitude, the lens of looking through things with a bad attitude is going to see everything bad. But if I approach with a good attitude, I'm not going to see any bad. I'm only going to see what my attitude projects that I see. And yes. we learned in sales, when I was in sales a lot, your attitude uh, promotes a better altitude. So the more attitude I have towards what I believe, what I want, what I'm after, it gives me a higher view to look at the land in a different way where I can see more. And therefore, I have more possibilities, more intentions and all of that. So this is what God is even saying. He said, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Then he says this, and you'll like this one. He says, and put on the new self, which is in the likeness of God and has been created in righteousness and holiness and truth. So God has giving you an opportunity to be very different than when you were born. He's asking you to go to the next level that he's created for you. He wants you to be in these three words that he says, holiness and truth. And when we talk about holiness, we're not talking about a do-gooder person or a perfect person. We're talking about a person who's set apart for the use of good things, for the use of right doing and living, uh, a person who's living truthfully, living authentically before people. And as a pastor, I always tell people, you know, I may be the pastor, but a pastor is just a person. Yes. And I'm functioning in a job that God has given me to reach you. That tells me that God loves you a lot because he created a space for me to be trained to reach out to you. So God had you in mind when he created me. Yes. Yeah, see, so that's some powerful stuff. Yes. So God wants us to know that. Put on a new self, which okay. is putting on that new you, which when you start to say, I am, the, the I am expressions, when you say that, what does that mean for you when you start to say, I am love and all that? How's that? I am is so powerful. Yeah. Uh, like I said before, instead of I want to be, I am worthy. I am love. Yes. You know, your yeah. words are powerful. Yes. It's, it's in the present. That's who I'm being. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And um, it, the words, words matter. I know in the Bible, yeah. what, does, what does the Bible say about the word? A lot of words matter. In fact, in uh, Matthew chapter 12, Jesus made this statement that every word that we speak, we shall give an account of. Hmm. Now, you think about that. How many words have we spoken daily? He says every word, and when I broke it down to break down the meaning of it, that means every word that you speak in a non-productive way that doesn't have intention and meaning, he says you shall give an account for it because he says the next verse is, by your words you shall be justified and by your words you shall be condemned, meaning you'll be judged by your words. So you want to be careful. And in Proverbs 18, uh, 21, he says death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that eat it, they that love it shall eat its fruit. So death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love that, the way you talk, shall eat the fruit of it. So when you see in your life things manifesting yes. and you don't like what's manifesting, you might want to change your words because your words are coming from your thoughts, right? So you're thinking about things and then you're saying it. So if yeah. death and life are in the power of the tongue, meaning that only life and death can come when you speak it, we need to be careful about how we speak. Yes. And there's so much more that God has said about your tongue and the words that you use. And in fact, I say it's the most powerful thing. When I marry couples, I said, do you know you guys can't even get married and have this thing confirmed unless you say, I do? Wow. If you don't say, I do, I can't pronounce you husband and wife. Wow, I so didn't know that. So that's how powerful I do or I will. That is an intention. I do and I will take this woman to be my lawfully wedded wife until you say that. All the power vested in me cannot pronounce you husband and wife. So it's important. Wow. Words are so important. 
They really are. Yes. They yes. really are. And becoming conscious of your word is really important. Very much. And, yeah. you know, most of us are not conscious because we're not aware. Yeah. And you're never, you know, you're working so much and doing everything in life, you, you don't have time to be aware. So I had to take a pause out and become aware. What am I doing every day? Why am I doing it? What's the purpose of this? Yes. Yeah. It's, it's important to know. You know, it I is. always ask, often ask, you know, God, why am I a pastor? Why am I a teacher of your word? You know, why, why am I this or that? And I had to really sit down and think, why am I? My mom named me Ralph. I used to hate that name. Aww. I said, uh, Ralph, what kind of name is that? And kids used to tease me all the time. they go, Ralph, and like they were just chucking up something or something. You know, it's yeah, kind of gross, yeah. but whatever. And I used to be so upset. And one day I looked up my name and it set me free. Aww. My name means helper and oh. counselor. Beautiful. That's what my name means. And Aww. I said, Ralph. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, because you you, you you assign that meaning that other people assign to it. They made jokes about it, but then when I went and found out what my name really meant, and that's why you be careful about what you name your pets, what you name your children. You know, yes. when you call people, because those names assign a lot of power and positivity, yes. or the reverse on you. So be careful. I tell people when you name a child, be careful. Yes. You name your puppy, be careful. Because <laughs> you're calling people things. I, one lady, her name was Melanie, and it means dark child. Wow. You know, I mean, it could be like attitude. So, you know, we just name people because we like the way it sounds. So it's so important, but I, I like that. And here's another thing that she said in realizing and becoming aware you are a beautiful soul. We, t we talked about that a little bit. Your thoughts and your emotions are different now once you start to assign that you are a beautiful soul. It's really hard for people sometimes that are humble to say anything good about themselves because they think if I say it, then I'm being arrogant. But it's nothing wrong with saying that you're a beautiful soul because God made you beautiful. Thank you. See, the Bible says we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Beautiful. Wow. That's 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 something beautiful. very powerful. So when you start to be down on yourself or kick yourself to the curb, I want everybody out there, I want us to know that God says... He has plans for us and our plan, the plans that he has for us are for our future and gives us a hope. And we were fearfully, wonderfully made, meaning that God took great pleasure in putting us together as the package that we are. And how dare us think differently of ourselves than what God intended for us. You want to talk about being intentional. God was very intentional when he made Halle. There's none like you. You're the only Halle in the whole world, a beautiful soul. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Ralph. Amen. And I wanted to tell you a story about my name. Yes. So growing up, I moved to Canada when I was five. They couldn't say Hale. Okay. And it turned into Hala. Okay. So in the past two years, I've actually changed it to Hale. Okay. Because that's who I am. Yes. And my name means halo. Oh, really? Halo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. wow. That's powerful. Yeah. Yes. Halo. Okay. The, yeah. The light of the moon. That's the light of the moon. And, and yeah. halo also has to do with purity. It has to do with holiness. It has to do with God's purpose in your life. You know, halos have to do, when people think of an angel, they think of a halo over an angel, so it's kind of an, an anointing. If you know the word anointing means, oh. it means that God has empowered you wow. to be. You know, I'm anointed to be a pastor. You're anointed to be a doctor. You yes. know, whatever your job is or the thing that you pick up as your life's work, you've been set apart for that. You've been made anointed to do that. And so God uses all of the faculty that he gives you and all of the strength and all the faith that you have in him to do what he's called you to do. And I always say, people say, what is my purpose? Well, I've learned we have many purposes. You don't have one purpose. Okay. You have many purposes. You may start out with one thing that you start doing, but you have many purposes. You're multifaceted in the things of God. I and, love it. Yes, here's another area of scripture I want to talk about the thoughts too, because you know I love what you shared about you know uh, being open and receiving, grateful, having more faith, leading to action, being more peaceful. Yes. Uh, the energy of love, the power of love. Uh, one of the things I didn't have you, I want to have you say that is, is how you felt about forgiveness now after that shift. Forgiveness. Well, when you talked about Jesus and how he died on the cross for our sins. And um, I, correct me if this is wrong. <laughs> so that gave me forgiveness. 
And, you know, no one is perfect. Right. And we, we bear shame and guilt from the things that we've done or we haven't done. Yes. And that just gave me peace and forgiveness to, to forgive myself. Yes. No one is perfect. No. Right. Not that I killed anybody, (laughs) you know, but that was just like the balloon popping again. Yes. Forgiveness is really, really powerful. I like that visual balloon popping. Yes. Yeah. And forgiveness (laughs) is huge. If you if you want to talk about a strong point of Christianity, a strong point of God, you can't do it without forgiveness because love is about forgiveness. And God is love because since he loves us, he forgives us. Love is not about letting things go, but it's about covering things, protecting things, and bringing things to a place of worth. So when we were broken, God made us worthy. You know, when we were lost, he found us. You know, when we were searching, he showed up. That's what it's all about. And so when you forgive people, it's more about you releasing yourself from the torment of the pain and suffering that somebody's done to you. So when you don't forgive, you're still associated with what they did to you and they've moved on to the next person and you're still in pain. So God says, release it. Or as you say, drop it, let it go. You have to move on. You can't move on without forgiveness. So here's the thing, a thought about that. In Philippians 4, 8, it's all in the mind. And we got to think about this. And when I look at the word of God, I say to the viewers, I say to you, to myself, here's how God wants us to look at our thoughts. It's found in Philippians chapter four, verse eight. He says, finally, brethren and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is uh, commendable. These are the things, this is the mindset he wants us to have. He says, if there's any excellence in anything worthy of praise, think about these things. So if I'm thinking about you know, what's right, what's honorable, you know, what's true on a regular basis. If that's my habit that I form, you know, I wrote the book, you know, the seven, seven days of positive habits. Yes. My thing is about having a daily time of reforming the way you think and cultivating the way you think. So when I look at this list here, he says, true, think of the things that are true, because a lot of things that are not true that we think about. Yes. Think of whatever's honorable. Why think about dishonorable things? Whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, that's a a list of things that will keep us away from negativity, doubt, unbelief, debasing ourselves. Because what's true about Hale now? What's true about Ralph now? I need to think about those things. What's honorable about me? What's honorable about your life? You got to give some credit to that. God is giving you life and it's for you to live. I can't live your life and you can't live mine. So yes. if I stay true to my lane and I always say this, it's a lot less crowded in my lane than in someone else's. Because if I'm walking in my lane, it's me. But if I'm in everybody else's business and everybody else's lane, that's where we get the traffic jam. Yes. You see, so we got to learn how to do that. But what do you think about those things, those thoughts that God would say in here, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable? We know what's true. We know who we are. We are love. Yes. Right? So when we're unworthy, we're out of love, or when we feel unworthy. And when you know something is not your truth, you know. Yeah, right. You're just masking it or resisting it. Yeah. And it's you doing it. So you know what's true, what's authentic for you. Yes. And for me, I feel like, okay, when you know your purpose, it brings you joy. It brings you love. Yes, You feel light. It's a beautiful thing. Yeah. So, and again, not being in your thoughts and just creating Mm. through you, through your spirit. Yes. Yeah. And the Bible teaches that we are to be creators in the sense that God is ultimately the creator. And the Bible says that we were created in his image or in his likeness. And I think I shared with you before, we are the image bearers of God yes. in the same way Jesus was the image bearer of his father. So when Jesus made this statement, he said, if you've seen me, you've seen my father. Wow. That's deep. Yeah. If you've seen me, you've <laughs> seen my father also. So when we look at each other and, you know, we look into what you refer to the mirror in life, yes. you, you can begin to see God, right? When you look in your mirror, God is saying to you, Look in the mirror and you'll see God. 
because what you're going to do is you're going to see an image of what God created. You are the express image of a, the creator of God himself. So how dare talk down ourselves Yes. when we do that? I knew you had made a little uh, statement about that before. You want to elaborate on that? Yes. So before, I didn't like looking in the mirror. <laughs> I didn't. Yeah. And knowing that that's God's image, I am worthy. Mm. I am love again. And I, I... I, again, I didn't like looking in the mirror. Yeah. Yeah. So somebody told me, I think it was you, that you're looking at God. Yeah. Like that, if you want to experience God, look in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. And it's that's so powerful for right. your life, for your worth, for your being. It is. Yeah. Well, the, the, the scriptures go in context. It's like, how can you say you love God, whom you have not physically seen, and hate your brother who you see every day? So what I do to my brother, I'm doing to God because wow. my brother came from God. He's created by God. Yeah. He has life given to him by God. So if I don't treat my brother right, how can I really say I love God? Yes. So that's why when I see homeless people, I don't judge. If I see somebody who is an addict or somebody who's made a bad turn in life, I don't judge because they are a manifestation of the life of God. And all they need is a little bit of refurbishing, yeah. restoration love, compassion. And so many people have come from the gutter to the palace because somebody believed in them and somebody had compassion on yes. them like Jesus did and brought them up from where they were to who they were supposed to be. And, and that's, that's the thing that here, I wrote this in James, or I took this scripture down, James chapter one, verse 23. When we talk about that mirror, when you look in the mirror and you see God, I used to never want to look in the mirror too. I, I hate to say this, but I always thought of myself as not so attractive. Not yeah. that it mattered to me, but I just didn't think of myself so attractive. So I would put myself down a lot of time because I figured if I put myself down first, they won't be able to say anything. So let me just beat me down first and then everybody will laugh and then it'll be over with. Yes. Yeah, I didn't like the rejection, you know, and coming up, I was like the ugly duckling in my mind, but yeah. I don't care. I don't care anymore. You know, I'm attractive for different reasons. I'm attractive because of who I am, who God made me to be. It's yes. not physical. You know, it's who I am, my soul. Like you said, it's my beautiful soul. Yes. So, so this is what the Bible says. Listen, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, so when we hear God's word and we don't do it, he is like a man who looks at his natural face in a mirror and once. He has looked at himself and gone away. He immediately has forgotten what kind of person he was. Wow. I mean, that's pretty powerful to think about that. Then he goes into saying, I'm in closing on that one. But the one who looks intently at the perfect law. So the Bible, the word of God is like a law. It's the mirror. So when we look at the Bible, we're looking at the reflection of what God wants us to become. All of these words that were written for us to become the I am's in life. That's what this is. So he says, the one that looks into the perfect law, right? He says, the law of freedom and continue in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an active doer. This person is blessed in whatever he does or whatever she does. Beautiful. So you get that information from God. Like you said, you had this major shift yes. as we talked about God. And then you started to become more active, more energetic. You, you begin to be more aware. Your name meant a lot to you. I am Hale now. Yeah. You know, and that's powerful. What do you think about that? I, I think God is powerful. I think we're powerful. Yes. I think we're magical. We're all little miracles. <laughs> yeah, we are. We are worthy. You know, I used to be the ugly duckling too. <laughs> yeah. But, but you know, I, I, when you're not confident and your being isn't confident, you still don't feel good. Yeah. Like you look good. Yeah. And then those criticizing thoughts damage your body. Yes. You know, yeah. cortisol goes up. So once you stop and you notice and you let go, you'll start feeling more energy. Wow. You'll start even losing weight. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Happy. Happy. Happiness, you know, creates yeah. weight loss. Yeah. Happy endorphins. <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. in joy and yeah. you're doing things you love and you feel good and you look good. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's just, I think it was, for me, it was hard because I was around so many people who saw themselves physically attractive and muscular or women, it's beautiful. And in my mind, I was a scrawny little dude, had glasses and stuff, you know, and 
it's look like a little little nerd. Yeah. And so when you compare, the Bible says, when you compare yourself to another person, you get into error. Yes. You error doing that because God made you unique to you. You're not supposed to be comparing yourself to someone else. So unlike someone else, you're a masterpiece. To Beautiful. God. And I, I love am. that. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> and I accept that, you know. And the last thing about image and all of that, like I said, we're an image bearer. Uh, I said to you that we are created in the image of God. And we're so far from that today because the lies of negativity, doubt, self sabotage, the world has made us feel a certain way. And we know when we start thought, our thoughts go a certain way, our feelings go a certain way, then our behaviors come a certain way, and then our habits just take form. Well, this is what God says in Genesis 126. This is his exact words. Then God said, let us make mankind in our image according to our likeness and let them rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the sky and over the livestock and over all that is in the earth and over every crawling thing that crawls upon the earth. So when we talk about the beginning, God's intention was that we become like him, that we're made in his image. In the same way God had rule, management, and dominion of the entire universe, he put man in the earth in the Garden of Eden, and he says, I want you to be like me in your space. As I am the father who controls and sovereign over everything, I want you to be sovereign and in control of the things I place you in. And so in our life, we're held responsible before God to be productive, nice. to be useful. Uh, to, to do something of worth and to show our purpose to the, to the world at large. So you're doing that by what you do. You know, you're showing your purpose. And you. so that was a very powerful thing. What, what do you think about that? You've been created in the image of God. That's beautiful. Yes. It's, I love it. Um, I really think we're all here to, to guide each other and give love mm -hmm. and support. Um, and it, that's just, it's a beautiful thing yes. to know, and it makes me feel more worthy, too. Yeah, it brings a shift for me, too, as you talked about last week. If I go remind myself, you know, I was created in the image of God and in his likeness. Again, it's not to say that we're the same as God, but, you know, my children are like me. They're not the same as me. And when you look at my children, you can see me in them. You know, and I see me and my children. Yes. Some of it good, some of it not so good, but, it, <laughs> but it's getting better. It's getting better. But yeah. I'm, it's just saying that um, we're not too far from the creator that he wanted us to be in his likeness. And so that means God is for us. He wants the best for us. He wants your life to be lived in such a way. And so I just wrote this down as we're concluding. Uh, we talked about a lot of things and I could talk all day, yes. but we'll, we'll meet again. We'll revisit again. But this is in conclusion. You know, the more you learn about God, you begin to understand yourself because we are connected to the creator in more ways than we can fathom. Beautiful and amen. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen. Dr. Lay, as always, I want to thank you for stopping by and uh, having these conversations, They're very necessary conversations uh, for us and for the viewers. And I really believe that people are getting a lot out of it. The last time we talked, they really loved it. And I, I encourage our viewers to continue to stay with us and uh, to write in the chat and let us know what your thoughts are, your feelings. Please give us your opinions. I want to know what you think about what did we discussed. There's no good or bad answer, no right or wrong answer. I mean, I would say feedback is a gift. And I appreciate you stopping by and joining with us. And Dr. L.A., thank you again for being with us. What a wonderful day that I have started. And I'm going to finish it strong. And thank you, Ralph. You are amazing. Thank, thank you, you for all your teachings. Amen. You're welcome. Amen. You're welcome. <laughs> Bye you. for now. Bye.